like talk about living your passion. Um, oh. Well, the, it, there's a lot that's surrounding it. So I, I kind of want to go a little bit to take where that was, take your experiences of human resources. So tell us a little bit about your experience in human resources before your now what is your dream job? Because that has certainly carried over from being able to help you develop this particular role in the curriculums that you're building. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was funny because there, like, I think like with everybody, there was aspects of HR that I loved. Mm -hmm. And there were aspects of HR that it just, I could not get out of bed thinking about doing. Yeah, I love the day. people. I hate the people. <gasps> right, like, it right, was just like, right. I want to get out of bed for the people, but I want to go back to bed because yeah. of the people. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I didn't, the reason I left HR uh -huh. was not because of the people. It was because of the horrible mm. people that called themselves leaders. Yeah. You know, yeah. my, my last HR gig, it was truly the president mm -hmm. and one of the vice presidents that just put me in an ethical dilemma where it was like, you need to admit that you did something wrong. And I'm like, so you want me to lie to make you feel better about the bad decisions that you're making that are impacting employees. Wow. Oh. And that goes back to my very first HR job that I ever had. Mm -hmm. Like I was a lowly HR assistant and I found an error that was made mm -hmm. in in just data entry error. And so one of our new supervisors was not getting the vacation that they accrued at the higher level. Mm -hmm. And I went to my boss and said, hey, there was an error. And she said, well, he hasn't caught it in six months. Don't say anything. Oh, okay. Oh, you're an one awesome. of your executive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're awesome. And so I thought, I can't do this. Like, I can't look this guy in the face every day and know. And so, plus and this isn't like a huge breaker, but it's right. like you're an HR assistant, new right. to my career. Right. Yeah. And so, luckily, I have just a heaven of a husband. We were newly married, and I called him and said, So I'm quitting today. Uh -huh. Um, here's what I'm going to do. And he's like, all right, girl, go, you know? And so yeah. I went down to the employee and said, here's what you need to know. Yeah. And then I went to, um, the executive director and said, here's what you need to know. Yeah. And then I went back to my boss and said, thank you for teaching me one of the most important lessons that I will ever learn in life. And that is, I cannot make decisions that are unethical or immoral. And so I left. And so now any decision I ever make, I think, can I tell my family? Mm -hmm. Can I tell a judge? And then yeah. also, what would this woman's decision be? Yeah. <laughs> as long as that all aligns, then I'm good. Where did those values instilled? Where? That, that's, yeah. now, that's big. It is big. Yeah. Because I, because in the Air Force, uh, you know, integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do. So yeah. in that sense... We are trained to speak up when there is something that is dishonest yeah. in, in that situation. And that's actually unique. It is. In a lot of ways, because you can't, you don't, what was going on in your mind? Because I think so many HR leaders and my colleagues and my mm -hmm. friends, there is that moment where you have to have a communication with a partner or even with yourself to be like, yeah. listen, I'm about to go forward with something. There's going to be an ultimatum. Yeah. I got to do what feels right. Yeah. Yeah. That is hard. Uh, you talk about skeletons. We're bringing them up early. Yeah. Um, that's Bring all right. Bring them out of the closet. Human realness. <laughs> Here I am. Um, so, um, I, I mean, honestly, my dad was army. Um, grew up in an yeah. army family, but he was a mili he was an army officer and want to talk about one of the most unethical people I know, like just, I can say this cause I haven't talked to him in 21 years, like wow. horrible, horrible person. Like wow. he's one of those that would use a phone for like eight years. And then when it broke, he would put it back in the box, take it to Walmart and then get his money back. Like. That was my dad. <laughs> That's what I grew up with. Um, wow. Yeah. So that was there's that. a part of me that I'm. I, I'm. I don't want to. I don't want you to share all those details because I knew how. Uh, <laughs> they, after 21 years, there's some. There's some things there for sure that this might turn into a different podcast. But there's a part of me that's like, is that bad or genius? 
I don't know yeah. for sure, but in the ethical sense, yeah. it's bad. Right. And that's just a scratch of the Oh, sure, that's sure. a safe podcast yeah. story for that. But um <laughs> but then my grandpa Floyd, my mom's dad, was uh-huh. just heaven. I yeah. mean, he was the who you want to be when you grew up. You know, wow. he was the when you walk in a room, no matter who you were, uh-huh. he would make you feel like he'd been waiting for you for years. That's wonderful. Um, you know, when you walked into his house uh-huh. for Christmas, he always gave us envelopes of money. And I'll never forget one of my cousins brought a boyfriend home that no one was expecting. Uh-huh. Boyfriend was lovely. Yeah. And when it came time for envelopes, he walks over and hands the boyfriend an envelope. And the boyfriend's like... What is this? And opens it up and there's a hundred dollar bill in I there. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And so just the kindest, most uh-huh. amazing person. And so when it came time for my wedding, my dad, I hadn't talked to him for years. He sent me a check for ten thousand dollars and said, I'm gonna walk uh-huh. you down the aisle. And wow. I was like, No, you're sure not. Yeah. So my grandpa Floyd actually walked me down the yeah. aisle and gave me well my mom walked me down and then handed me to my grandpa and my grandpa yeah. gave me away you know so. what, I think there's a there is a psychology there for sure to understand that kind of post-trauma survival that whenever you have overcome some sort of situation of a relationship in your life in that that it, it builds that value system it's like uh, my mom uh suiting for this she had a, she always had a lot of quotes in her office she worked out of her home and she always had a quote that said uh, no one is a complete failure they can always be used as a bad example yes and <laughs> so a lot of times those individuals such as yourself who have built those value systems which is really unique because you're like I don't want to be that but you had the influence of those individuals like I'm not going to be like this leader and then it carries over into the workplace like there's something inside and I, I've had to make those decisions in my career it's like I have to say something I've had to have that communication with my my partners to say I could get fired will we be okay yeah this situation but yeah. it's funny it's not funny but there there is something that that carries with you that it's just it's a it's tormenting inside to say I can't not say something it doesn't matter if it's as small as like a little typo or an error or a matter of ignoring a complete uh, sexual harassment claim right 